Praise the Lord, everybody. Once again, we're back in the hands of the Lord one more time. Ready to give God glory. We're ready to magnify his name. This is praise and worship. Why don't you stand on your feet? I dare you to begin to open up your mouth and put your hands together and join in with us. Let's get on one accord this morning. Come on, let's praise the name of the Lord Jesus.
shifting in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. in the house. devil thought he had somebody but the Lord is with us always
He's here. He's here. The presence of the Lord is here. Whatever you need, he's in the room. Whatever you desire, it's in the room. If it's healing that you need, it's in the room. If it's deliverance that you need, it's in the room. If it's salvation in the room. Somebody just needs a touch from the Lord. He's here, he's here. There's a praise in the house. There's deliverance in the house. There's healing in the house. Salvation's in the house. Financial breakthrough. It's in the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. I said he's worthy to be praised. I said the Lord is worthy to be praised. Some of our viewers, you're going to catch on in a minute. 
of what the Lord is doing here at LRC. But I need you right now, whatever you're doing, to stop what you're doing and tap into the service. Because somebody's getting ready to get healed. Somebody's getting ready to be delivered. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God meant it for our good. going to move on in the service right where you are I dare you just to lift your hands one more time I dare you just to lift your hands right where you are and begin to give God a, a worship right there tell him how much you thank him tell him how much you love him how much you appreciate him he is with us always acknowledge his presence acknowledge his presence Let's sing this together. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy ways are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I live my hand in total land. Come on, help me. Say Jesus 
Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. Help me say, say Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me.
how can you not be happy to serve a God that we serve? Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for allowing us to be in our right state of minds, for allowing for our limbs to be functioning, for our hearts to be beating, for our eyes to see, for our ears to hear. But that in itself is testimony that you are with us. I am grateful and honored that you will call me your son. I pray that today will not be just an ordinary day. Allow for your spirit to be able to rest in this place. Speak peace in this place. Let your love permeate from each, each area of this house. Let us be continuously reminded of the love that you have for us. And even when we fall short of the glory, you still say you're healed. Even when we don't obey, you still say move forward. And because of this, I can only be able to say thank you. I can only be grateful. Despite what the world may say, I trust you. So today in life restoration, let there be a praise that comes out of somebody's mouth. Let there be a worship that has never been heard before. Let us begin to have fresh revelation. Let us be renewed. Let us be steadfast in our faith. Let us not waver, for you are an awesome God. You are a merciful God. You are a healing God. You are a loving God. So allow for us to be able to have a word come from Lady Carol today. Give her the strength. Give her the fortitude. Give her the tenacity. Give her the wind. Give her the stamina. Give her the power. Give her the anointing. Give her everything that she needs to let her word go across the airwaves. To reach somebody who may be out in the darkness. Who needs to hear a fresh word from you. For we are people here to restore life, passion, and purpose back into God's people. For we will not turn our backs against you. For we will hold our heads up high and give you praise and give you honor. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Let your voices let them know that you appreciate them. Let your worship know that you appreciate them. Let your praises let them know that you appreciate them. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. good guy. He's a 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 wonderful God. I just feel something is just, something is just shifting in the atmosphere. It ain't just here. It's just across the landscape, across the world. God's spirit is just speaking across the people. He's looking for willing vessels who would be able to carry out the mission. He's looking for people to be able just to stand fast, to give him worship, to give him praise, to give him what he deserves. If you believe God right now, if you want God to come into your life, just open up your heart. Allow for him to be able to have the space, the room. You can't do it by yourself. Give God the room. Oh, hallelujah. When there is a divine attack, that means that's confirmation you doing what you're supposed to be doing. And he's done attacked us in so many ways. He's done attacked the head, but the head is still here. The head is still sitting right here to my left. 
If that means the head is still there, that means the body needs to follow. And we are the body. And if you believe, God, that you are a body of Christ, you need to just open up your mouth and begin to give him praise. You need to be reminded that he's a healer. If he's a believer, he's sitting right here. He's a miracle worker. He's a bless maker. He can make it happen. Hallelujah. Oh, we can't do the same as 2020. Oh, we done crossed over. Oh, we done crossed over. Oh, we getting ready for the new. I need some fresh energy. I need a fresh praise. I need some fresh worshipers. I need somebody to believe. I need somebody to worship. I need somebody to love him. Give him what he deserves. Give him what he deserves. Yes, Lord. Come back to him. Come back to him. He gives you what you need. He gives you what you want. He loves you. Hallelujah.
deserves it. He deserves it. Yeah. Miracles. Miracles. He's given LRC a miracle. a miracle. There's a, there's a miracle in this house. There's a, there's a miracle in this house. Do you not understand that God took a man from the dead, had him arrest, brought him back to life, gave him air in his lungs, gave him eyes to see, gave him a worship. He's sitting right next to you. I believe God. I worship God. Nobody tell me nothing. I know what he can do. I know what he can do. I see what he can do. I see what prayer does. I see what fasting does. I see what giving does. This worship isn't about me. This worship is about bringing back life. Let's go. Woo. I see it. It's new. It's something new. It's in the atmosphere. Just take a hold of it. It's something new. If you want new, you got to reach higher. You got to dig a little deeper. You got to worship a little more. You got to give it to them. It ain't a part of y'all. It's a part of y'all. move on is just when I think back about what he's done when I think about all the trials and tribulations oh let me stop it just brings a joy to my heart Woo. we gotta move on we gotta we gotta move on we gotta move on we gotta move on oh Let's give God a praise. Let's give God a praise. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Pastor. We love you. you seeing right now, we'd like to welcome you to Life Restoration Church. We welcome all our online viewers. If you just witnessed, this is an everyday thing around here. We drip with God. His swag is all over us. His anointing is all over us. And we shall not stop. We can no longer be those shy vessels. I'm looking to go up. I got more work to do for the kingdom. If you got more work to do for the kingdom, your praise shouldn't be the same. Your worship shouldn't be the same. You have a responsibility to push the agenda forward. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this place, in this building. And if you out there in 5G, 
Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We want you to come be a part. Because this is where the word is exalted. This is the best part of the service. We're getting ready to give now. We're getting ready to give now. This is where, this is where you show that, that next level faith. This is where you actually believe. This is where you actually give a proactive faith. And I'm a living testimony that the proactive faith, it don't matter if your credit score was 585, he'll still give you a quarter, a half a million dollar house. Oh, you don't believe me. I know somebody who's been there. I know somebody who's done that. All because of giving. If it's $5, if it's $1, if it's a $40 gift, it's about where it comes from. In Deuteronomy 26, 1 and 2, it says, When you enter the land the Lord your God has given you as a special possession, and you have conquered it and settled there, put some of the first produce from each crop you harvest into a basket and bring it into the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. This is where you honor his name. You can also honor his name out of society as well. But this is the place in which it has a special covering. It has a special anointing. It blesses the house of God. There is a responsibility the church has, and it's our responsibility to keep moving it forward. So don't hold back from God. Give what you can. Heavenly Father, we bless you. If you hold up your anointing, hold up your giving right now. Hold up your giving. Father God, bless the giving right now for each one of the hearts and individuals who are giving right now. Allow for it to be a testimony of their faith to be able to give unto you and let the, let the actual giving be in the works of the house. Allow for it to be able to come back for them 10 times fold, 100 times fold. Bless their houses, bless their homes, bless their lives, and bless their ministry, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful blessings of which you provided for us. As we continue to move forward, let your fresh oil anointing continue to fall upon this church. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you and honor you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's time for the most important part of the service once again, the Word of God. Open up your hearts and your ears and hear what thus has to say the Lord.
Praise the Lord, somebody. Oh, praise the Lord, somebody. Has God been good to anybody in this place? Then I dare you to give God a hand clap of praise. God has shown himself faithful, has he not? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here we are again, one more Sunday. God is good. Amen. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live in troubles rise, mommy, I'm going to hasten, not take my time, Philip, but hasten to his throne. Oh, I give God all praise, honor, and glory one more time for the privilege to stand in the stead of my husband and, and give a word again and again and again. As long as God gives me breath in my body, whatever the assignment is, I'm going to fulfill that. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. The devil's busy in the mic, but I'll scream, holler, and shout if I have to without a mic to get the word across. Because I know that this word is for somebody. And I had a whole different sermon. And I had given my son my title yesterday afternoon, I think about 2, 3 o'clock. And at 12.30 a.m., God shifted it. He'll do that. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to trust you because obviously this is for somebody. And when I was standing over there and I looked back I saw the top of my brother's head and I said oh my brother's in the house and when I saw his head God told me he said he is who that message is coming for today so while I'm up in the wee hours with this God said it's for you brother and I want whoever's out there that's listening catch on because we're going to talk about destiny places today amen so if you have your word of God uh-huh. I think that's for you. Did you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. First Samuel, the 17th chapter. That's where we're going. First Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 20 through 26. Loretta, I love you. I love you on my mind and my spirit. I love you. I pray for you this morning. And we are sending our best over to Loretta. Amen. Amen. Once you are there, let me know you're there. God bless you, woman of God. By saying amen. Okay. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel he has come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him. The king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 
that he should defy the armies of the living God. Let us pray. Father, we humble ourselves in your presence right now. We tell you thank you, God, for another day. We thank you, God, that you've proven yourself, God, through your word. We thank you, God, that the word was decreed, it was declared, it was spoken on last week, that our pastor would walk in here today. And we're grateful, God, that you have allowed your word to manifest before our eyes. Father God, I pray now, God, that you would take this word and allow it to do what you sent it out to do. Father, there's a name on this word. There's a life on this word, oh God. There's a body attached to this word. And we pray today, Father God, that as you move me completely out of the way, oh God, empty me out now so that you can fill me up and use me as your vessel, oh God, so that this word will do what it is sent out to do. So God, I thank you and I'm humbled by the assignment and the mission. And I pray, Father God, it won't fall on deaf ears or a soft heart, God, but it'll do exactly what you sent it out to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. You may be seated in your place, amen, amen, amen. So if you have ever heard me or followed me or whatever they say on, on a social media or anything, you'll know that I absolutely love David. I love the story of David, and we've all heard the story of David and Goliath now. Uh, I've heard the watered-down Sunday school version when I was little. I even heard it as a teenager. I heard it in my 20s and in my 30s. I've heard this uh, story about faith, and they use it as a version of faith, but that's not what I come to talk about today. I want to talk about destiny, David. And I love the story of David because it speaks and represents every destiny-bound person under my voice. And if you have or are suffering rejection or betrayal, alienation, offense, shame, flesh issues, jealousy, and pain, my friend, don't fret too long because you're just in your destiny place. And because you're in your destiny place, I need you to look at someone close to you, or if you're by yourself, just say out loud, I'm on a date with destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I need you to know that a date with destiny is an inevitable future event or encounter, especially one which is likely to be momentous. The destiny place is not for the faint. It's not for the weak. It's not for the unsure or the insecure. It is a place where death will absolutely happen. Happens in your flesh. Happens in your thought process. Um, it's also a place where relationships will end and pruning will begin. Uh, your greatest pain and your loneliest moments will happen right there in your destiny place. It's a place that God can't reveal to us when he calls us there, Minister Flukas, because if revealed, oh my goodness, we won't take up the mantle. In your destiny place, you gotta wait and not retaliate. Did you hear what I said? In the destiny place, we wait. And we don't retaliate. Now, in the destiny place, your process and grief almost always goes unnoticed. Have you noticed that? That when you're going through some of the worst times of your life, most people don't notice. And that's where you know, and that's when you know, oh, my, I'm in the destiny place. In the destiny place, we don't get an option of how to even go through it. We don't get a handbook. This is where we find David today, overlooked by his father. When Samuel comes to anoint the next king. Now, can you imagine a blind parent raising an invisible child? He had to deal with his oldest brother, uh, Eliab, Eliab's jealousy, and he was a narcissist, Eliab was. And so he was jealous of David, and he always had to say something and put David's character into question and remind him that he was nobody but a little bitty old sheep herder. And who besides David and myself has had your anointing and assignment judged and berated by those you thought would understand. You know, the ones that don't understand your change. The ones that rather talk about you because you didn't show up at that party than pray for you. The ones that decide because now you want to live saved that you're boring and you're not um, up to par for them, but it's okay. When you begin to be alienated, that's when you know, oh my goodness, I'm in this destiny place. Now, I need you to understand that when God sent Samuel to anoint David, he was 15 years old. And so now we find him in the text face to face with Goliath, and he's 16. 
years old, it would be 22 more years before David reigned as king over Israel. Now, I want you to allow me to set the scene for David's first date. The reservations were in the Valley of Elah, where two armies are poised for battle. Now, there was no table. There was no chairs. There were no candles on the table. He would, this was one of his first dates because he's on a date with destiny. And as he's there, it's, it, God has already made the reservations. He set it up. And now we have two armies. They're poised for battle with nothing but a hill separating them. The larger of the two was that of the dreaded Philistines, giants, mighty in size and power, and well-armed. The smaller one was that of Saul, king of the Jews. And for 40 unrelenting days and nights, a Philistine giant taunted this army of Saul's. And the Bible says that Goliath's height, and I need you to hear this, was six cubits and a span. His spear's head weighed 600 shekels, and he had six pieces of armor. David thought he was only there to deliver lunch. <laughs> he didn't know he would end up on his first date, Anthony. He had no idea that this was going to be his first date with destiny. Provoked by Goliath's ignorance, David is not concerned with his nine-foot-three stature. David's only question to the people was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, to understand this, I need you to know that you must know that circumcision represented the covenant between God and Abraham, all right? Uncircumcised meant a man without a covenant, a stranger to God. David was saying, who is this man without a covenant who was coming to attack us? I don't understand. Y'all sound crazy because we have a covenant with God Almighty. That alone ensures us the victory. So remember, we're still talking about David's destiny place. Now, no, Goliath had absolutely no idea, Nene, what was about to go down, literally. And I want to bring your attention for a second back to verse 22 where it says David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage. Come on, pastor. The keeper of the carriage, all right, and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. Now, that lets me know that David leaving his carriage with the keeper means David had every intention on coming back. David had no idea what was about to happen. He said, stay here. Let me go run this lunch and salute my brothers, and then I'll be right back. But God had different plans. God had made a different reservation. So I need you to know that all those plans that you've made, and by 50, you're going to do this, and by 40, you were going to do this. I have you asked God, what is the plan, Father? Because we like to make plans, Deacon Bland, and we never stop to think, God, what is your plan for me? And so here we are. And he uh, is on his father's instruction. Uh, he's there delivering the lunch. He checks on his brothers. And the reason why David was so blessed, because destiny is only found in obedience. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be obedient. So 40 days, I told you, Goliath kept asking for a man, not a boy, but he kept asking for a man. And the only taker was our little bitty 16-year-old David, the shepherd boy, breath still smelling like Similac. And your destiny place may not look appealing to you, which will cause you to be overlooked. But I need you to know that I need you to shift overlooked in your mind. And if you feel that you've been overlooked, you're not overlooked, baby. You are in God's timing. So David volunteers to fight. And after King Saul agreed to let David fight, he decides, I'm going to give you my armor because this is a big guy. And everybody was scared of the Philistines, even Saul. And so he tries to dress David in his kingly armor and his helmet. But they're way too big. They don't fit David. And that would actually make David more vulnerable to go out with something that does not fit. But David already says, no, I cannot go in these garments, for I have not tested them. Never use someone else's armor in your destiny place. So David takes them off. Then he took his staff and he chose five stones from the brook. So all he has is his shepherd's staff. Let me just lay that down. That's not going to do me any good. And so he goes and he gets these five smooth stones from the brook. I've preached about the smooth stones before. And he put them in his shepherd's pouch. And with his sling in his hand, he approaches the Philistine. Now, I like what David does here because he refused to use an untested weapon. 
And he reminded Saul that as a shepherd boy, he had surely been tested before, and he knew what he was doing. Oh, I love the humble beginnings, don't you? But our giant, uncircumcised Philistine is less than impressed. I can imagine that he lets out this hearty laugh and roar as he sees this 16-year-old itty-bitty boy coming toward him with five stones, Paula, and a slingshot. And so what did he say? Am I a dog? That you come out meeting me with sticks? Come closer, little boy, he said, and I will give and feed your body to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. David, though, was unapologetic and unafraid and did the giant one better. You come to me decked out with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, he said, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Hallelujah. This day the Lord will deliver you to me, sir. You won't be able to deliver me to nothing, but this day the Lord is going to deliver you to me so David was talking strong David was talking in faith and so as he tells him he said and I'm going to cut off your head and give all of the bodies of your entire army to the birds of the air and the beast of the field now this was big talk right there and so now the fight is on and I don't want you to think that just because you're armed with what God has given you that's going to intimidate your enemy Minister Jones, your enemy will not be intimidated by you. You've got to be bold. You've got to stand strong in the face of the enemy like David did. Because you see, Goliath had already signed his own death certificate when he challenged destiny. Not David. Destiny. Now, the spirit of the Lord was on David. He wasn't afraid, so he rushed at this giant. And I need you to know today that your attitude toward the giants in your life will be very telling when it's time to face them. If you really believe the promises of God, you won't run from that fight. You will run to the fight. Do you really believe what God said or not? Are you all talk? The giants are going to test what God has put in you. And I need you to know real quick, and this is free, you can't kill a giant that you're living with, shacking with, sleeping with, and cheating with. Hmm. Of course, now I'm going to go back. I told you that was for free. But you know the story. David used his sling. David used the stone to bring our big old giant down. But David didn't stop there. There was no sword in David's hand. Yet he ran, stood up upon this uncircumcised Philistine and took his his, the uncircumcised Philistine, the man without the covenant, he took his sword out. He drew it from the sheath, and he ended up cutting off the head of the giant. Now, when the Philistine army saw this, they were the ones now who were afraid. They were the ones who were psyched out, and they were the ones that began to flee. But I want you to know that then Israel's army pursued them. Now, in your destiny place, you've got to pursue your enemy until they can't come back. Because if you read this whole entire story, the Philistines did not flee when Goliath first went down. They were at a far distance, you see. Kyler, they thought, well, surely he's going to get back up. Because he just hit him with a little rock. Is his blood sugar low? Did he have breakfast this morning? Because surely that rock did not kill the giant. And so there they are. They're at this distance. And Goliath, they're thinking, could have tripped. They don't know what happened. Or maybe he was just wounded. But he's surely going to get back up. And he will have the victory. He will get this win yet. I'm sure he will. But when David looked around and saw them watching, David cut off his head, held it up. And all doubt was removed. And the army fled. Now, we sometimes just fight our enemies until they get over the hill. That's because we're not fully engaged in the fight. When you're fully engaged in the fight, you don't want them to just be over the hill. You want them to be dead because they can come on back over 
the hill. Okay, so what I need you to understand is they are left to attack us another day, another month, another year, if we do not finish the job. But David pursued his enemies until they were destroyed. And that same enemy could never come back to fight them again. Now, you can't step into your destiny place fighting midgets. David wouldn't have been a hero if he'd slain the midget. God wouldn't have been glorified if he had slain the midget. If you're prone to complain, God can't use you. If you write your benefits in dust, and then you want to put all your injuries and woe is me in marble, God can't use you. Okay, if you're a complainer, I'll say it again for the Holy Ghost. I need Mike, too, because I'm not going to be long. If you're a complainer, God can't use you. Mm. I need y'all to think about that. If you write all of your issues and your hurts and your pain and what everybody else did to you in dust, God can't use you. If you write your benefits in dust, God can't use you. If you write how you got tripped up in everything that you did for everybody else and everything everybody did that broke your heart, but that's all in marble because you don't want nobody to forget that. God can't use you. In your destiny place, you can't remember the things that are difficult for you but you got to use the ways in which you've seen God move and God work and God deliver as your weapon because those are tested weapons in the middle of a regular ordinary day will be where your destiny will find you David's victory over Goliath catapulted him catapulted him into his destiny place. Now, the reason why I've slowed down here is because this is very, 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 very important. And I need you to pay close attention. Hear me as I say now. David only rushed at his enemy, not his process. He only rushed, Minister Anderson, at his enemy, but he didn't rush at the process. And that's where we get tripped up because somebody can tell us. I said earlier that God does not tell us that we're in our destiny place. He doesn't tell us when and where the reservations are made for our, desti our date with destiny because then we either will not pick up the mantle or we just assume it's here and it's now. And then we become reckless people of God, reckless pastors, reckless ministers, reckless evangelists, reckless prophets, and then we kill the body of Christ. And so we have to understand that whenever you rush something through a process, it will lack longevity, it will lack knowledge, it will lack wisdom. So if it lacks substance and knowledge and wisdom and longevity, Paula, it's not going to work. This is why we cannot be tossed with every wind and doctrine and lack stability when the storms come. The dating process will absolutely give you everything you need. It'll give you strength. It'll give you stability, wisdom. It'll give you knowledge. It'll give you durability. It'll give you staying power. The process kills our flesh and our selfish desires along with it. And so tending sheep. David was worshiping God without ever thinking of becoming king. He worshiped God while he was hidden in the sheep field long before he was anointed to be king. He was worshiping God when Samuel came to anoint him. Samuel found him actively working, but not actively seeking an anointing. He was never seeking an assignment or an appointment. All he was doing was what he was told to do. And what deemed David necessary and useful was his ability to worship God without looking for 
for a reward. And when we can bless God just because he is God, no strings attached, no manipulation, no bargaining, only then will we be able to step into our destiny. Now, David wasn't intimidated and didn't have to pray before the fight because in the destiny place, God makes the reservations. Therefore, God is a constant unseen presence. Now, Goliath was baked, pulling, pulling David into his destiny. Goliath was an image of Satan, of sin, and of death. And David is this narrative, is not an image of Israel, but he is a typology of Christ. And Christ slew Satan, sin and death with just one blow, one single death on the cross. How do I know? I need you to ask me. How do you know, Lady Carol? And I need you to tell you something. And I need you to hear me real clear right now. Goliath is a type of the 666 man because I told you earlier I said I need you to hear what I'm saying about his size and about what he carried. Okay so he was six cubits in height. Six pieces of armor. Paula there was 600 shekels of iron. The six pieces of Goliath's armor are a carnal counterfeit of the six pieces of the armor of God that we find over in the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 6 oh my god there's another 6 there pastor the armor in Goliath the armor of Goliath which is brass means filthiness in Hebrew connoting false doctrine which leads to sin thus God has drawn for us the contrast between the armor of filthiness and brass and the armor of righteousness now I need to know I said look at these five smooth stones what a about the five smooth stones. Now, why does the text specify that David chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag? After all, David's faith was so big that David knew that he was only going to need one little stone. And when David released the stone from the slingshot, it hit Goliath in his face forehead traveling 35 meters per second faster than a baseball thrown by best pitchers now if you do the calculations on the ballistics and on the stopping power of the rock fired from David's little sling it's roughly equal to the stopping power of a 45 caliber gun oh my god the speed the impact, the force of that rock, that hit should have caused the enemy to fall backwards. I wanted to know why did he fall forward? Because that would defy the law of physics. So I began to study a brain injury. And I looked at the frontal lobe and falling forward and landing on your face causes a disturbance of your frontal lobe which causes instant confusion and motor loss you cannot move you lose strength you lose your arm strength you lose your hand strength you lose your fingers everything Goliath needed to be victorious he lost it when he fell he wouldn't have lost it had he fell backward but he lost it because he fell forward and I need you to hold on right now because not only did he fall forward and not only did he lose everything that he had to fight David back David had warned Goliath he said you come with your sword he said you come with your spear and you come with your shield you came to me filthy, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, of the Almighty God. I'm the righteous one. You've defied God, and now I'm going to have to kill you. Now you're going to be lying, defeated at my feet. All the world will know that there is a God in Israel. Once I'm done with you, David spoke his first prophecy on his first date because there lay the giant, but he was prostrate in a physical expression of submission on the ground before David. Now, if Goliath had 
falling backward, God wouldn't be glorified. But because he fell forward, it gave to the word. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So when he fell, the prophecy was fulfilled. David said, you'll lay at my feet. So he couldn't fall backwards. He had to fall forward. And I dare somebody right now to let your neighbor know when he fell forward, all glory, all honor didn't go to David, but it went to God. The Israelites watched him fall. Everybody watched him fall. The Philistines watched him fall. Everybody knew God was God. Everybody knew David was in his destiny place. I need you right now to tell God, yes, I'm in my destiny place. Yes, God, this is my first date. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah. Listen. So, David, I told you, David cut Goliath's head off. And he held it up. So as I was studying this, I kept picturing a head just being held up. And I need you to know that when you're decapitated, you're still alive. Fellas, did you know when you're decapitated, you're still alive 12 to 15 seconds later? My goodness. And the reason why is because your blood is still oxygenated. David took his head. David did it so that the Philistines would see and flee. They needed to see, according to David, that he was dead. But y'all know how I think. And I said, God, I need you to give me revelation here. Because I'm sure that that scared the bejesus out of them. I said, but I know there's something more that you want me to tell somebody in their destiny place. So David, because... God told me this word was for you. He hasn't given me a name for everybody else. So I'm going to look at you and let you know that when he held up the enemy's head, he was still alive. So what does that mean? That mean his eyes were open. And David took his head. And David did a scan of, of the Israelites. He did a scan over the Philistines. It only took a few seconds. But David wanted him to know. I thought you said you were going to kill me. You don't believe in God. But this right here. This is the covenant of God. I am the righteousness of God. I'm going to look my enemy dead in his eyes. Because God wants you to see just what he did. So look here, David. Look at your people running. Look at your cowards taking off. God gave me strength. I'm only 16 years old. I had one rock and a sling. I took you down. And I took you by faith and not by sight. He didn't look at the sight. He looked at his God. He didn't look at his size, but he looked at his God. And because he looked at God, Kia, he took down the enemy. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. So listen, in his destiny place, I'm certain that David is a typology of Christ because attempting to make David merely an example of faith runs the risk of sending a message that given enough faith, we can save our own selves. That's not the message that God wants us to have. So I need you to picture this. David and Goliath, Christ on the cross, count the wounds. How many were there? They pierced his hands. And his feet 
were two, right? His feet were two, his hands were two. And the soldier that thrust the javelin in his side, that was five wounds, five small wounds, like five smooth stones. Oh my goodness, Christ slew our foe with a single death on Calvary, but that single death contained five small wounds. David took Goliath's head and he brought it back to Jerusalem. Jesus bruised Satan's head on Calvary. David's destiny place begat Jesus, but Jesus is the greater David who defeated the greater giant. Now what are you birthing in your destiny place? Who will step into their destiny because you're in your destiny place? What giant are you going to fight in your destiny place? Your destiny place is it contingent upon your status it's not contingent upon your weakness because Abraham was old Elijah was suicidal Joseph was abused Job went bankrupt oh my god Moses had a speech problem Gideon was afraid Samson was a womanizer Rahab was a prostitute the Samaritan woman was an adulterer Noah was a drunk Jeremiah was young Jacob was a cheater David David was a murderer and Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer too and Peter was a coward. Now I tell you today, somebody's fighting a midget, but I dare you right now to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't let nobody tell you that that thing is too big because we offend God when we tell him it's too big. God is a big God. We got to have a big faith. My giant was too big. But I said, devil, you are a liar. I'm going to kill it. Now I need you to know that back on November the 15th, 1965, when I came from my mama's womb, the reservations had already been made. He set a place for me at the table. He said, daughter, I've got an assignment for you. I'm 55. It's been a journey. Everything didn't happen overnight. I wasn't looking for an assignment. I wasn't looking for a place. I wasn't looking to be Minister Jones. I wasn't looking to be First Lady. I was just looking to be who he called me to be. My reservations, my reservations, my reservations are not always at the best table, but I sit there anyway. I'll do it anyway. I dare you today. I dare you today. I dare you today. I dare you today. Tell God thank you for my destiny date. Thank you, God, for my strength. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So, somebody out there, you rejected destiny, mistreated, destiny, lonely, destiny. Divorced, destiny, broke, destiny, lost your job, destiny, sick, destiny, should have been dead, but you're here, destiny. The doctor said one thing, God said another, destiny, you almost died, brother, but you're there, destiny, kidney transplants, rejected, Destiny, everything on you, destiny. When the devil tries to keep you from us, that's not destiny. 
but that's part of the destiny because you got to fight the devil. And I need you to know today that whatever the devil puts on you is going to start in your mind first because if he can get your mind, he's got everything else. But I told you earlier that you got to kill the giant with how you think. You got to kill the giant with how you move. You got to kill the giant with how you pray. You got to kill the giant no matter what he says. Y'all know this has been a giant. But every Sunday, I kill the giant. Every day in prayer, I slay the giant. Every praise, I slay the giant. Every yes, Lord, I slay the giant. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll sing. I'll preach. I'll teach. Giant, I'm going to kill you. Giant, God is bigger. Giant, God is stronger. Giant, God is sovereign. Giant, giant, I'm coming for you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I need you to act like, act like you know that you got a giant. Name your giant right now. Call out your giant right now. Get a stone, get a slingshot. Tell the devil, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. the devil. I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of you, Satan. I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of cancer. I'm sick of kidney disease. I'm sick of high blood pressure. I'm sick of obesity. I'm sick of brokenness. I'm sick of lack. I'm sick of the devil touching the minds of God's people. I bind you today. I'm coming today. You cannot have God's anointed. They've been called. They've been chosen. I bind you today. Satan. 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 I'm winding it up. I'm winding it up. I wind it up in my praise. I wind it up in my obedience. I wind it up in my worship. I wind it up in my yes. I wind it up in my preaching. I wind it up. Wind it up. Wind it up. I dare somebody name your giant. I wasn't going to take the mic, but you need to name your giant. And somebody say, I'm going to kill my giant. Y'all ain't saying enough of me. Y'all ain't saying enough of me. Y'all ain't got enough excitement about your giant. Tell your giant, I'm coming for you. Depression, I'm coming for you. Heartaches, I'm coming for you. Anxiety, oh, come on. I'm coming for you. Name your giant. And tell your giant, I'm coming for you. I dare somebody say, giant, you about to fall. 
giant, she got there, y'all better speak this thing. Tell somebody one more time, giant, you about to fall. Yes, yes, hold on. Come on, da 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 You've been in this place too long for the giant to have victory over you. But the word of God just came. And I tell somebody one more time, one more time and say, giant, you about to fall. <laughs> giant, <laughs> you about to fall. <laughs> Depression, <laughs> you about to fall. <laughs> Heartache, <laughs> you about to, y'all ain't preaching. Come on, y'all ain't with me. <laughs> Give me the disease, <laughs> you about to fall. <laughs> Heartache, <laughs> you about to fall. <laughs> Tell somebody it's going down. If you got some stuff going now, tell somebody it's about to go down. Blood pressure, it's about to go down. I gotta get up here. <laughs> It's about to go down. It's going down. Listen, listen. When I was standing over there, God said, somebody don't believe yet. They haven't caught on yet. And so come here, pastor. Just the first Sunday of January, y'all know what he was going through. They told me that he stopped breathing and they said they lost him. And the doctors kept calling, trying to get him back. And I want you to know that when I was driving home, the chaplain called. He said, I just want to pray. Last rites with you. Now that's a giant. But just like David, I refuse to receive it, David. I refuse to believe it. Helena was with me in the car. And I decided right there in the moment to walk by faith, not by sight. I said, I'm sorry, sir. No disrespect. But I've already talked to God. I got my prayer warriors on it. We already know he shall live and not die. That giant won't come back anymore. Here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Here he is. We did it. We did it. Don't you tell me. God can't do it. Don't you tell me. God's not a miracle worker. I dare you to get a slingshot. I dare you to get a slingshot. I dare you to get a slingshot. I dare you. Try God. Try God. Try God. Try God. Try God. Woo! giving God praise. Oh, we two pieces in the enemy. I think we two pieces. I think we done two pieces. As we say, we two pieces. Hallelujah. Oh, we fighters. <laughs> That's what we do. God just put it in my spirit. The victory is yours if you just show up for the fight. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. The victory is yours if you just show up for the fight. I dare somebody say, I'm going to show up for the fight. I'm going to show up for the fight. I heard the word of God say. I heard the word of God say. 
He prepares a table. Oh, in the presence of my enemies. I dare somebody say, show up for the fight. Show up. Show up. Show up. Look at me in the eye. It's time to go round for round, pound for pound. It's time for you to knock up. We don't need no weak saints. It's time for us to get our feet in the ground. It's time for us to get our dukes up. Enemy, you can't take us. You got to know, I got you. You trying to take this here. I'm going to give you everything I got. Oh, oh, I get stumbled, but I'm going to get back up. Oh, but I'm going to get back up. God got me here. I stand here. Whoa. We two pieces. It's time to fight, Saints. It's time to fight, Saints. It's time to fight. Quit letting your circumstances bow it down. You got a mighty God on your side. You already got the victory. Claim your victory. Claim your victory. Fight for what you want. Fight for what you believe. Fight for what you want. Fight for what you believe. But you gotta show up and fight. You fight with prayer. You fight with the word. You fight with the Holy Ghost. No weapon formed against yourself prosper. We ascended. We ascended. We ascended. Level up. Hallelujah. 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 We need that tenacity. Tenacious. Tenacious saint. Tenacious. 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 Woo. Well, you welcome him. You gotta let God in. You gotta open up your heart. If you wanna be able to elevate, you gotta allow him in. The doors of the church are open. Why don't you welcome him in? We want you here. This ain't fake. This ain't fraud. This fight is not for the weak. But I believe in you. Because he believed in me. Come with us. Come with us. Tenacious. Hallelujah. 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 You don't need no music to worship. You know what God did for you. I thank everybody who joined us for this broadcast. And I pray that this word will go forth. That the hearts and the minds of the people would be able to receive this word. That God is looking for some tenacious saints. Some tenacious believers. 
You have got to have a tenacity. You have got to have a mindset that you will not fold. It's time to go to war. I'm ready. We are battle tested and ready, Philip. We are battle tested and ready. Eleven forty-five. Sunday worship. Life restoration. Come back here, where the party's gonna keep going. The anointing gonna keep flowing. I thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen. Philip, y'all, y'all keep that going. Oh, Basha. The Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you. Oh, got that abosha. The Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you, Philip. Oh, Basha. Oh, she got that abasha. Oh, Basha got that abasha. You had a few giants huh, in 2020. Huh, and the devil is trying to come back in 2021. Huh, but God told me to tell you, get your rock. Oh, Basha. Get your slingshot and kill that giant. Kill it, kill it. Kill it, kill it, kill it.